Hey there, my name is Françoise. Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I made a simple watercolor landscape painting for beginners. I'll be guiding you through this easy painting step by step, so don't worry if watercolor is still pretty new to you. I'm working on a 5x7 piece of watercolor paper, and I'll be using paintbrushes of different sizes today. I linked all my supplies in the description below, so feel free to check them out. If you're getting started with watercolor, just keep in mind that even though it's totally fine to use whatever it is you already have, quantity supplies and especially paper tend to make a huge difference with the way your strokes and techniques are going to turn out. So if you're not seeing the results you would like, don't get discouraged and instead experiment with different supplies. First things first, I like to tape my paper down to a firm surface with some masking tape. And I also do this because I like to get those crisp edges with tape. I was looking for originality for this painting since I did it for a challenge on Instagram based on the theme Lost in the Woods. So I decided to splatter some masking fluid on my page first, just to get paper white splatters all over later on. I splattered my masking fluid a bit more towards the bottom, which is going to be the darkest area because I really want the white of the paper to contrast with the darkest layer of paint. To splatter the masking fluid, I'm using a stiff old brush I rub my finger against. I try to make small splatters and bigger ones. It all depends on how much pressure is used when rubbing your finger and also how much masking fluid is on the brush. If you don't have masking fluid, you can do this step last with white gouache or with a white shell pen on a dry surface and you will get a similar look. Once the masking fluid has dried, I wet my paper generously with clean water and a big brush. It doesn't really matter what size your brush is, but bigger is always better when working on a large surface. So I wet the paper evenly and I try to avoid any puddles. Now it's wet, you want to start painting right away. For my background, I was looking for a luminous look, so I decided to use yellow. I dropped some paint everywhere and here just have fun with this step, don't overthink it. What matters here is to make sure the paint you drop is kind of runny for this very first layer and also make sure to leave some blank areas to maximize contrast and light. Once this is done, I usually like to drop more of that paint only a bit more saturated and because I felt it still wasn't contrasted enough, I added bits of gold ochre towards the edges of the sheet. Gold ochre is darker than yellow and it looks like yellow ochre and if you don't have either, orange or even red would work here as long as you don't overload the background with these. Because I'm not super patient, I like to use a hair dryer or a heat gun to make my paint dry faster and now everything is dry, we can start painting the trees. We're going to paint the trees in layers to create the depth and the illusion of distance, which means that our first layer of trees will be really light, making them look like they're in a distance, and the last layer will be much darker to make them appear like they're in the foreground. For the first layer, I used yellow again, with just a bit of gold ochre to make them look more interesting than if I was just using one solid color. I am using a medium sized round brush and what's important here is to use a brush that gets to a fine tip like mine. Again, all links are in the description if you need more information on what you can get. And with the fine tip, I start tracing the top of the tree and press gently on my brush that I get closer to the base of the tree. Then because it dries really fast, I trace some branches and then I add a bit of my gold ochre on one side of the tree and at the bottom also to create a bit of interest there. I didn't want to paint a stiff looking ground, I'm not sure I'm using the right term here but you get the idea, so I faded the bottom of my trees quickly before it dries with more paint, just dabbing the brush around and underneath the trunk. I realized after it dried that it kind of looks like the bare trees lost their leaves and those leaves are piled up on the ground, that was not my original intent but I like the look. I repeated this exact same process three more times. The second layer was done with gold ochre. But again, use orange or red if you don't have anything close to yellow ochre. The difference with this layer is that I made those trees a bit higher, a bit darker, and for that I just used less water and more paint in my brush, and I added a bit of a color called Indian red. It's a kind of a brownish red that you could get mixing red and brown. The base of the trees is also closer to the bottom of my sheet now, and I'm going to keep doing this with the next layers. Layer number three is Indian red with a bit of brown at the base and side of the trees. 
And finally, layer number four is my darkest color I was talking about previously, and that's Van Dyke Brown. Now you can see that the base of this first layer is even closer to the bottom of my sheet. The top of the trees reach the top of the page, and the paint is a lot darker. To darken this even more, I used some neutral tint, which is close to grey or black, and I mixed that to my brown color to make it way darker and create great contrast. One thing I didn't mention for the trees is to try and trace them with a relaxed grip, not a stiff one, and you will notice they look a lot better. In fact, the more you have fun with watercolor, the better the experience. Every time I try to control my strokes too much or my paint too much, I notice I don't get the results that I want, unlike other mediums like graphite for instance. Now for the girl, I freehanded this little silhouette and because I didn't want to ruin my paper, I transferred it onto my painting with some tracing paper. Of course, if you feel comfortable drawing it right there on your painting, then it's great and a good time saver. I removed the masking fluid I had applied at the beginning to make sure the silhouette will look solid and very well defined. To paint her, I used some brown mixed in my Indian red, and then I added the branch in her hand to make it look more fun. I used a brush with a fine tip here, and I tried using a very saturated mix of paint too. I had fun with more splatters to complete the painting, and what I used is some of that dark brown paint, and then some Indian red paint that I splattered all around the painting. And there you go with this watercolor landscape. If you enjoyed this simple watercolor landscape painting for beginners, please let me know in the comments below, give this video a thumbs up, and share with your friends. And if you have any questions regarding this painting, drop me a note in the comments so I can help you out. And also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more watercolor techniques and ideas. See you next time!